Fox Business. Opportunity. Pure and simple. Happy Saturday morning to everybody. This is your questions, your money, your business here on the Fox Business Network. I'm Dagan McDowell. And I'm Tracy Burns. And this hour, we're going to talk about small businesses, entrepreneurial sparks. And Scott Gerber, a first timer on this program, but a big how day to you, Scott. Scott <laughs> Gerber is the young entrepreneur columnist for Entrepreneur Magazine. We've read it. We love it. Thanks, everybody. You want to get to a question? Michael from Georgia writes in. He says, I have a concept for a video game that will teach kids how to use credit and handle money. At this point, it is in the fetal stage. How can I bring the idea to fruition with limited capital? Scott, best way to do this is bring it to schools, things like that? Well, there's a couple things. The first thing I would always suggest with limited capital is, is working within the means you have. So, for example, don't think about the all the frills. Don't think about all of the uh, kind of additional add-ons and such. Go to the core message. Create, create a simple, very easy to use uh, prototype for all intents and purposes. Uh, get it out in the world. Put it on the internet. Find ways to gain exposure and ultimately show that you really have something that's valuable because once you really go into the world especially of entertainment video games media there's a lot of gatekeepers you have to watch out for. Right. If this person can't code it how does he go about finding somebody to actually create the technology behind it? I, I t this, this is kind of a common question it's it's uh, expertise versus ideas right. and the reality is is when you uh, ultimately are the idea creator it's also your job to find the right talent and the the right individuals to bring on board you can go back to your college days go to alumni organizations find folks that ultimately <coughs> are in your community that have as much passion as you do but don't have the uh, idea per se, but may have the ability to want to kind of put something out in the world as well. So I would always say try to find people with like-minded interests and people that you have within your circle of uh, contacts, et cetera. Great advice. Good advice. Well, it's a, th it's a two-part strategy. I mean, the first thing is you obviously have a wonderful product. It tastes fantastic, and, you know, it, it comes down to how many people can you get it to. Right. And so the first thing is you have to differentiate yourself from the conglomerates and from the larger and also more established boutique shops uh, throughout the United States and internationally. And the way really to do that is you obviously have very identifiable products, and, and you have to find ways ultimately to get to your consumers by touting those products, by making them your mainstay. So, example, on your website, search engine optimization, you stick to your main products as kind of the, 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 the main way that they're going to find out about you on all of your marketing materials. You find ways to take your key, oh my God, look at these amazing products that are so different, and make them your wow factor. And I want to open up a place where people can have parties, birthday retirement, and on the days that I don't have that, they can, I can rent it out to other people with businesses that want to uh, show off their business. Scott, do you have direction for her in terms of is this the best time to start this kind of business? Uh, I was going to say, you know, right now, especially in the event business, you know, you have a, a huge loss of uh, revenues from big companies. They're, they're, they're cutting spending left and right. A lot of the luxuries that were once had, the big Christmas party, the big travel uh, plans for the entire company have kind of gone by the wayside. Uh, what I would advise you is, is if you have uh, an intention of testing your idea, find a space that already exists in the neighborhood that you're in, create some kind of strategic partnership with them. Find ways to test your idea on a shoestring budget with some kind of unique aspect of what you will bring to the table to prove that you actually can create a track record and a business out of the situation. With, without committing the money. Correct. Without actually going out on a limb and rent, signing a longer term lease for a space. Or it, Exactly. I mean, right now, you know, it, it's going to be very difficult uh, without a proven track record to go to a bank, to a lender, uh, and prove that you can actually maintain an entire space uh, while, you know, this, this recession continues and, and even towards the upswing. So my, my suggestion would ultimately be to find ways to either test your concept or scale it back slightly and find ways to make your offering more unique. Bob, you're the lender. What do you think about all this? I agree 100% with what Scott said. I would, go, I would partner with someone who has unused space, I'm sure, in Chicago as throughout the country. Uh, there's excess capacity. I would pick out what you want, find the owner, and cut a deal with them and then go out and, and sell the business and sell your events. Thanks to our me. entire panel, everybody. To Don Rainey of Grotech Ventures, Scott Gerber, uh, entrepreneur, columnist, young entrepreneur at Entrepreneur Magazine, and then Bob Coleman. Guys, we will be right back with Red Beacon.